Hallelujah. We're still on our series, The Lord, Your Healer. Our key verse has been Exodus fifteen twenty six. God said, For I am the Lord who heals you. Well, that's word enough for me right there. If he's the Lord who heals me, I know he's going to heal me. Amen? Amen. I don't care what anybody says. I don't care what my relatives say. I don't care what the doctor says. I don't care what my body says. He said, I am the Lord who heals you. The Lord who heals you in the Hebrew is the name Jehovah Rapha. And this is one of the many names of God. Jehovah means the Lord, the self-existent eternal one. In Psalms 90, verse 2, the CJB, that's the complete Jewish Bible, the word says, Before the mountains were born, before you had formed the earth and the world, from eternity past to eternity future, you are God. Self-existent, eternal one, praise God. God has always been, and He always will be. We have to realize how big our God is. Revelation 1.8 says, Jesus is speaking, says, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, says the Lord. Who is, that means right now. That means when you wake up tomorrow, He'll still be who is. He's real time, present tense, right now. Your healer. Who was and who is to come? The Almighty. The only Almighty. No other gods before Him. Amen? Rapha means the one who mends you, repairs and fixes you, cures you, makes you whole. He is the Lord, our healer. What a wonderful blessing to know that our Lord is our healer. All the cults and all that, they don't talk much about this kind of stuff, if any. And all the religions out there, It's all performance-based. All of it. Every bit of it. You've got to do this to do this and do this to do this, and then then you'll excel, and maybe you'll make it to uh, uh, wherever they're going. You know, they'll make it nice, but that's not where they're going. Uh, Christianity's grace-based, not performance-based. Amen. (laughs) Amen. Because Jesus... Did all the performing. That's why he came. And if we get over to performance base, we're not identifying with Jesus. I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ lives in me. I really need to get performance out of my head because that man's dead. How can I perform? We're dead and our life is hid with Christ and God. Not only do we identify with resurrection life, but we identify with with Jesus in his death. That's Philippians 3, 11 or 12, somewhere around there. Identify with him. Your biggest problem you ever have in your life is you exhume the dead man. You don't want to do that. So stay in grace base, not performance base. Just keep walking in grace, amen? Amen. He's our healer. That means He wants us healed. That means He wants us healthy. But He's much more than just our healer. Amen? Amen? God said to Moses in Exodus 3.14, He said, my name is I am. 
that I am. God is saying to Moses, I am everything you need me to be. God not only has everything we need, He is everything we need. He is. He's our healer. If you want your healing and you're not getting it, check what you're going after. Are you going after the healing or the healer? That's where people mess up all the time. I was in the 70s when the faith uh, movement was real big and the prosperity was, movement was real big. And people got all sideways because they were, they were going after the prosperity. I wonder where it was. Because uh, you're supposed to be going after the provider, not the provision. And people mess up like that constantly. And they're still doing it today. Still doing it today. But I, I need prosperity. Well, you, you need to go after the provider. Amen. Well, now, don't pay my bill. Well, you think, uh, you know, a month from now, that when you don't get any, uh, did it work any better? No, go after the provider. Go, go, go after the one that provides, my God shall supply all my need, according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Go after the provider, you'll get the provision. The names of God describe His nature. His names are His identity. It's who God is. God said, I am Jehovah Rapha, the Lord, your healer. He said, I am Jehovah Shalom, the Lord, your peace. He says, I'm Jehovah Shammah, the Lord who is present. I'm really excited about that one. That means I can always be in His presence if I just believe this and walk in it. Jehovah Rohi, the Lord your shepherd. Jehovah Jireh, the Lord your provider. Jehovah Nissi, the Lord your victory. Jehovah Sig Canoe, the Lord your righteousness. Jehovah Magain, the Lord your shield. There's a whole lot more. Everything you need, because I've been studying these names. I mean, we could, you, want, you need another hundred? Everything you need, God has a name. Yeah. It's the neatest thing in the world. Amen. Everything you need, He has it because He is it. Amen. That's strong. That's so Acts 17.28 the Word says, for in Him you live, you move, and you have your being. So then as you identify with Him, you'll be the healed because He's the healer. Amen. But you've got to identify with Him. Yes. We've got to look to Him, don't we? Yes. We've got to identify with Him. When you identify with Him, you're the unshaken because He's your peace. You'll be in His presence because He's your environment. Because He's always present in your life. He's always your environment, your atmosphere. Well, why do you say that? Who are you identifying with? If you identify with Jesus, you're going to be in His presence. Jesus said in John 14, 20, I'm in my Father, you in me, and I'm in you. I'm in my Father, you didn't have anything to do with that. You in me, he said, and I'm in you. I'm in you, you had a little bit of doing with that. You to let me get in you, but now the middle part is where we live. I'm in my Father, you're in me, and I'm in you. You're in me, you're in me. Are you in him today? It's up to you. Are you in Him today? Are you in Him this hour? Are you in Him this moment? Are you in Him this, this moment when you just got cussed? Are you in Him? Well, I don't think I was when I got cussed. Okay, practice. <laughs> practice. What is that? First John 3, 7. He that practices righteousness is, is, is righteous even as he is righteous. Practice. You know what practice makes? You know what your mama said? It makes perfect. You know who the perfect is? Jesus Christ. That's good stuff right there. 
<laughs> when you identify with him, you're identifying with the provider. And you'll be provided for. Mm. You identify with him, you'll be victorious because he's your victory. When you identify with him, you'll be the righteous because he's your righteousness. The devil don't want you to have a revelation on righteousness. That changes everything. You'll be the protected because he's your shield. You'll be the protected because he's your shield. He's everything you need him to be. I am. That I am. If you would, pull out your bulletin. You've got a memory word, meditation word in there. Acts 2, 21. It says, And it shall come to pass, that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. The word saved is an all-inclusive word for what Jesus did on the cross. He saved us from something. Or He delivered us from something. What did He deliver us from? Hell later. And hell now. Well, if you're saved, what do you get? You don't just get a vacuum. Something else shows up, don't it? Okay. What do you get? Well, you get heaven later. And heaven now. Well, if we broke that down, what would that be? How about healing later and healing now? Health later, health now. How about peace later and peace now? Back to all the names again. You're going to get victory later, but you can have it now. Oh, you going to be in His presence later? Would you like it now? In this hell-bound world, that's the only place I want to be. In His presence. Mm. Boy, is that good. It's all in His name, have you noticed? And it shall come to pass, it said, whosoever (laughs) shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Well, who does this work for? Whosoever. Are you a whosoever? Do we have any whosoever's in the crowd tonight? You qualify. (laughs) I love the Word of God. It's so good. (laughs) To call on the name is to speak out the name. To confess the name of the Lord. As you confess who God is, you confess... God, you're Jehovah Rapha, my healer, and you confess I'm the healed in you, then guess what he's going to do? You'll be healed. Why are you so sure? Because it looked like that verse right there said, and it shall come to pass. Well, it don't seem like I'm getting healed. Well, are you calling on him? Are you confessing his name? Are you declaring who you are in Him and in your identity with Him? Yeah, there's some things for the Christian to do. Fighting the good fight of faith is not just sitting there watching God fight. You have to open your mouth or nothing works. You have to speak it forth, amen? He's going to bring it to pass because you called on His name. You spoke His name. There is no other name bigger than the name of Jesus. Every knee will bow. Every tongue will confess. Well, how about your body yelling at you in pain? It needs to confess that Jesus is the healer, amen? That tongue needs to confess it too, doesn't it? Y'all know me. I'm all about right here and now. I'm not waiting 
to get the glory, to get this stuff. God is waiting for His people to take it now so Romans 2.4 can be a, a very active verse in His people's lives. The goodness of God will lead people to repentance. God wants you and me to be an example of His goodness. And you can't do that when you lay in bed, sick as can be, and they're, they're foreclosing on your house, and you just saw your car towed away because you didn't pay the bill. And then you're telling your neighbor, you know what? You need to accept Jesus and you can be like me. I don't want to be like you. <laughs> I really don't. <laughs> You know, God really loves us. I mean, the ignorance, the stupidity of His kids. And He still loves us. And I'm talking about everybody. We've been ignorant and stupid too. Can I get a witness? We all have. But we're growing. There's some out there not growing. They're going to do their duty tomorrow morning. Church starts at 10.30 over at noon. They'll get there about 10.45. Play on their phone to about 11.15. Preacher gets up there at 11.30. Pass notes to about 10 to 12. He says, come on up, brother so-and-so, and and you give us the benediction. We pray, we're out of there, and we're eating fried chicken. Before the prayer's over. They did their duty. Then late at night when they're tired, they're thinking, got to be more to it than this. Oh, there is. But you got to get to church. Well, I'm at a church. No, 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 no. No, a church is... <laughs> it's the body of Christ. You ain't with the body. You had a social club, sweetheart. And you can fellowship yourself all the way into your grave if you like to. You're going to get the Word of God at this house. 100%. Uncut by man's religion. Straight drop from the Holy Ghost. You got a problem with the word? Just bring your Bible. We'll talk. Amen. 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 You don't come here for my opinion. You come here for the word. That's why I spend twenty plus hours a week to get that part, next part. That next part. I spend a whole lot more than that. I just say that conservatively. I eat it. I breathe it. I sleep it. I get up, I get up in the middle of the night going over scriptures. I'll get up in the morning, think my, my first thought is confessing the Word as I go get my coffee. It's all the Word. You've never seen such an addictive individual as me. It's my drug of choice. Proverbs 4.22, His Word is health or medicine. It's my drug of choice. And you go after it? It gets deep. You can't get out. You're sold out. You burn all the bridges. you got to get another fix. Another hit of the Word of God. You've got to. Can I get a witness? Amen. Amen. (laughs) Well, you're preaching like we in jail. Well, you know, still a good word, ain't it? Praise God. If you would, jump over to Romans chapter 10. If you want to walk in all that God is, you've got to speak your faith. Amen? You've got to get away from trying to perform and into grace based on faith. It's a faith that it might be by grace. Romans 4, 16. It's all about His Operational power. His unmerited favor. Grace. 
And you get it by faith. Romans 10, verse 6 says, But the righteousness of faith speaks in this way. Do not say in your heart, Who will ascend into heaven? That is to bring Christ down from above. Or, verse 7, Who will descend into the abyss? That is to bring Christ up from the dead. This is what the righteousness of faith doesn't say. And now let me break it down. All that said is, I'm not going to say what do I have to do to get Christ to save me. What do I have to do, my works, my performance to get Christ to heal me? Because saved is healed. Healed is saved. Amen? Faith does not say that. Faith doesn't work for healing. That's not faith. That's back to performance. That's back to trying to earn a healing. No, it's all grace. Amen. (laughs) Faith just receives a healing because it's a gift. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It's a gift of God, not of works. Thus any man shall boast, Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. For by grace are you saved through faith and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. What's the gift of God? Grace, salvation, and faith. Those are the gifts of God. If you looked at that word, if you looked at that verse in the King James or New King James, you see the two words, it is the gift of God. It is is italicized. The translators of the English language were given a privilege to make it sound like English. Those words wasn't in the original. So this is what it says. For by grace are you saved through faith and that not of yourself, the gift of God. What is? Grace. What else? Salvation. What else? Faith. So that should get everybody excited. You don't have to work for it or earn it. Just take it. What's a gift? It's a gift, Eric. What's a gift? Grace. What's a gift? Salvation. You, you took that gift, didn't you? Uh, and, and what did you use to take it? The gift of faith. We're not talking about the special gift of faith. We're just talking about God's faith that's in you. And now the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God. It's His faith. I go ahead and take it. That's why you can't say, well, I just don't have enough faith. No, you do. You do. You just got to continue to let it develop and let it grow. Well, how do you do that? Uh, turn off the doubt and unbelief in the world. Amen. What do you mean turn it off? Would you like me to break that down for you? There's all kinds of ways to turn it off. I've turned it off. I have an aversion against that stuff. I used to be a, a movie buff. I don't want to even hear the music no more. Because all I feel is the fear in the music. I don't want it. Refuse it. And different kinds of music, forget it. Why do I want to hear that ungodly music? Well, I like to be, okay? And when the devil comes knocking at your door, sing a line of it to him. Tell me how it's going to work. I don't think it'll work that well. Do we want to be faith giants? Well, if you want to be faith giants, you can't be hanging with the ways of the world to be a faith giant. You've got to check what you're putting in you. Because whatever you're putting in you is coming out. I'm expecting our faith to grow and grow and grow in this series. We don't have to work to get Christ to heal us. He has already done that. John 19.30, he hung on the cross, he said, it is finished. The work was already finished. We've we got to make that turn in our, in our thinking and in our hearts. You've got to walk by your sixth sense, not the first five. Your sixth one 
is faith. You've got to walk that way. Didn't 2 Corinthians 5, 7 say that? Walk by faith and not by sight? That's how you've got to walk. Do you want to see signs, wonders, miracles? Do you want to see when pain hits you and you command it to leave and it leaves you? Well, you can't be eaten on as the stomach turns and all my little demons. You can't be chewing on that kind of stuff and, and consuming that kind of stuff. Jeremiah fifteen sixteen. Jeremiah said your word was found and I ate them. Well, apparently we can eat words. Your words became a joy and rejoicing of my heart. You've got you to gotta get in that word. It has to be... Your number one priority. And it'll turn into an addiction. You can't get enough of it. His word is fresh every time you look in it. Why is that? Because Jesus said, I am the truth. His word is just not words on a printed page, His word is His presence, because He's the truth. And so when you get there, I'm not against you reading the Bible through. But when you get there, don't do it just to say, man, I got those five chapters done in 15 minutes. Well, bless your confused heart. You got nothing. You can't even tell me what you read. I bet I I could come up to you in 15 minutes and say, what chapters did you read? And you'd have to go look. Didn't even remember that. Appreciate that. Amen, Richard. I got it done. Oh, what did you get out of that? Nothing. I told you all before, I read the Bible through eight times when I was younger. What did you get out of that? To tell you, I read it through eight times. I got nothing out of it. And I was going to ninth time, and I thought, wait, 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 wait. What are we doing here? Got pretty good at turning it into cliff notes. (laughs) <laughs> it gives you nothing. Praise God. Romans ten six and 7. Jesus has already descended and paid for our sins and its penalties through His stripes, His cross, and His death. We don't have to try to do something to get Him to do something. He's already done it. He's already ascended and then sit down to us His faith and His grace by His Spirit. The work is finished. The work is finished. Isaiah 53, 4 and 5 says, Surely He has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem Him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was... Bruise for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon Him. And by His stripes we are healed. All but the end is past tense. It's a done deal. When He said it is finished, it is finished. And then He said at the end, we are healed. We got it. You got to you, you got to make that turn and say, "I got it," but I'm in pain. Command the pain to leave. Call on the name of Jehovah Rapha. Identify with Him. Call yourself to heal. Command the pain to leave. It'll leave. What if it doesn't? You didn't believe it. Well, that's kind of hard. No, it's Bible. It's all Bible. A bunch of scriptures say that. So you're saying, if I do believe it, <laughs> it'll leave. Yeah. But I thought I did believe. Well, just saying that, you're doubting. You're in unbelief. You, you gave up, right? You thought you did believe. What's that mean? You're not believing. Could you be between the amen and the there it is? And after giving God a, a minute and 21 seconds, you gave up. Could that also mean that I was really never in faith? I'm going to try this. Show me in a real Bible, God says to try anything. He won't tell you to try. 
well, I'll try it. Well, you, you, you're already defeated. He's already equipped you to win. He's already called you an overcomer. He's already called you victorious. He already told you, you get the victory in everything. But, there you go. Got that button away again. Get your butt out of the way. Praise the Lord. Brother Chris, I'm glad you're going over this. I need to hear it over and over and over. Amen. I'm glad you said that to me. You got to hear this stuff. That's why I'm, you know, I'm hoping this goes all the way to 2023. I'm having the best time in the world. I'm getting my faith so lined up. Keep hearing these messages throughout the week. I've heard last week's Five or six times already. Really good stuff. I'm getting more revelation. Well, you said it. I understand. But the anointing's coming through me, and then I want to go over to get it even deeper in me. Man, that sounds like a lot of work. Yeah, get busy. Praise God. Well, then I won't have time for my favorite TV show. That's the objective. Amen? Amen. <laughs> Isaiah 53, 4 and 5, all this is past tense. Jesus has already did all this for us. All that is past tense. He took all our sin. He took all our sickness. Surely as bore our griefs and carried our sorrows in the Hebrew, as surely as bore our disease and carried our pain. That's the one that really bothers people down here on this planet. He took all my pain? Yeah. Well, I just can't see that. You know, when you say you can't see that to me, that tells me you can't believe that. And you know, believing's a choice. So why don't you go ahead and believe it, and guess what? You'll start seeing it. I don't want to be in pain. He don't want me to be in pain. I really like that when my Lord tells me He don't want me to be in pain. And He took the pain. What pain? The pain that came because of sin. Because pain is the penalty of sin. Oh, wait a second, Richard. He took my sin. He paid my penalty, right? Now, correct me, because I don't know much about law stuff. If he took my penalty and then I take it, isn't that called double jeopardy? Right? Okay, thank you. I'm not going any deeper there. Why am I taking it? Well, okay, get your well out of the way now. He took it. 1 Peter 2.21 says, Who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree, that we being dead to sin should live unto righteousness, by whose stripes you were healed. That's coming from the prophet Isaiah, Isaiah 53, 4 and 5. Peter's looking at that and said, well, Isaiah said, by, by your, uh, his stripes you are healed. Well, then he said, by his stripes you were healed. Well, I should be healed. What's the hang up? you got to believe it. you got to believe it. Believing is a choice. Remember Doubton Thomas? You know when you get to heaven and you see Doubton Thomas? Don't call him by that name. That would not be nice. Just say, hey, Thomas, good to see you, man. Don't call him Doubton Thomas. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Just a side note. <laughs> Thomas said, I will not believe. This is a revelation. I will not believe until I see the holes in his hands. Did you hear, I will not believe? It sounds like believing's a choice. That's good. Well, I do choose to believe. Thomas said, I will not. It must be based on your will. What do you think? Boy, that's good. By his stripes, you were healed. 
That's past tense. We've already been healed. So why don't we just call on the name of Jehovah Rapha, confessing that we're the healed in him. And Acts 2.21 says, it shall come to pass. It shall come to pass. It shall come to pass. Why don't you focus on it shall come to pass and not the clock. Amen. 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 It shall come to pass. Well, when that's going to happen, you're back to the clock. Well, do you get things instantly, Brother Chris? Yeah. Do you get things over time? Yeah. You get things you believe you receive by faith and it's still in your body for a long time? Yes. Am I going to base my faith on uh, not having a manifestation? It's real easy to, isn't it? Don't do that. Don't do that. Check your faith. Check your believing. Amen? We're still in Romans 10. Romans 10 verse 8 says, But what does it say? The word is near you in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. This is what the righteousness of faith says. It says the word of faith, which is the word of God. That's all you're supposed to say. And you know what the average Christian says the most? They'll complain all day long on what the doctor said. Well, the doctor said this, and the doctor said that. And he says, it's going to take time to hear, and i got to take this, and i got to take that. All you're doing is letting the word of the doctor reign. And people get together. Well, Sally, how's your arthritis? Mine is really acting up now. Oh, I'm really pumped hearing that bull. <laughs> People do it all the time, amen? Yeah. amen? Oh, they get together. You go to any religious churches out there when they're having potluck, they talk about it all the Yeah, amen, thank you. You couldn't hold that amen, could you, Robin? <laughs> oh, how you feeling? Well, let me tell you. In line at Walmart. Oh, yeah, that too, everywhere. Well, I'm just a little under the weather. Well, get out from under it. You see why people don't invite me to speak at their church? You know, there's no, there's no, there's no insult like the truth. I think the truth is called a, a sword. It, it cuts you on it. Yeah, and we miss the first time. We we'll get you the second time. <laughs> But it's sure nice to be as old as I am and staying healthy. I like it. When I started this church, I said, I'm going to be healthier in 10 years. Well, it's been over 10 years, I'm healthier. Feeling good. I know Jehovah Rapha. I know him personally. He hangs with me everywhere I go. Like I said a few weeks ago, I do have a family doctor. He stays with me always. He's never far away. If, he's, if I need something, he's ready. He's ready to see what's wrong. And you know what he does? He prescribes his medicine to me. And I take it. He says, just take it until things change in your body. Yes, sir. I will. I will. Don't take any other stuff. Ain't that good? Take some goth pills. Praise God. This stuff works. Amen. It works. I dare you to go after it. I dare you when your body is talking louder than anything. You say, shut up, body. I'm the spirit man, the master of this three-part human system. I'm not listening to the soul or the body. Y'all both shut up 
and the Word says this, and the Word says that, and the Word says I'm healed. The Word says I was healed. The Word says I am healed. I'm healed, and I'm not taking it. And five minutes later, when the pain hits again, repeat it. Amen. You're going to find out that your body's going to start lining up because it has no choice. Amen. You're going to find out the devil will flee because you finally believe in it. And you're submitting to God first, then you're resisting the devil in his works. And James 4, 7 says, he will flee. But you're not trying it. I have no bridges to go back on now. It's God or nothing. It's the Word or nothing. And you should be there too after the last two years of all the lying and deception we've heard from the people we thought had our back. Bull! All they wanted is money, power, and control. And they're still after it. Because they got a lot of money. But guess what? We got God. Don't let up on the fight to save our nation. And we fight every day in tongues. We want to speak the exact words that God needs to manifest in our nation. And just don't rely on English. Because you'll find out you get into some stuff that's not God's will. Fry that cuss in the White House, God. No, you don't do that. <laughs> Appreciate that amen again, Robin. <laughs> Thank you. Get them saved before judgment hits, God. You can tone it down a little bit, amen. <laughs> there you go. Walk in love. It will take faith. Amen. (laughs) Ah. When you speak the word of faith, like Romans 10.8 is saying, you'll take your healing out of the spirit realm into the physical realm. Faith is like a hand that reaches out and takes what God has already made available in the spirit realm. What has He made available? Everything you need. It's in His names. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Why aren't they in the physical? Why aren't you reaching out in faith and taking it? The only way you can take it is by faith. Reach out and take it. Bring it into the physical. Glory be to God. Boy, that's a good word. Verse 9 and 10. Y'all still in Romans 10, right? Verse 9 and 10. That if you will confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised Him from the dead, you will be saved, which you will also be healed. It's all the same. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation, unto healing, unto prosperity, unto peace, unto protection. Everything you need. Do you see how important your confession is? I confessed Jesus as Lord when I was 12. I went down the front of the church and the pastor said, say this after me. I confessed Jesus as Lord. I didn't know nothing about nothing. I'm doing what the man of God said. I got saved. I got the biggest miracle this side of heaven at 12. So what's the hang up with all these other little ones? I got to keep taking them the way I took the first one. That's all. That's all. As you've received Christ Jesus, so walk in Him, Colossians 2, 6. How did you receive Him? I confessed Him as Lord. I believed that God raised Him from the dead and I confessed Jesus as Lord. 
And with my heart, I believed unto righteousness. It wasn't works. It wasn't earning. I didn't perform. I gave up. And with the mouth, confessions made unto salvation. Well, that's how you get it now. You got the biggest miracle. You change your destiny from hell to heaven by that confession. We need to really value our words. Don't say anything you don't want. You do have what you say. Proverbs 6, 2. You're snared by the words of your mouth. Well, I don't believe that. Well, you just confirmed it too. You snared again. You took salvation by believing and confessing God's word. You didn't have to get God to come and save you. He already saved you. You just decided by faith to take the gift of salvation. Well, decide by faith to take the gift of healing. You believe with your heart and you confess with your mouth and you receive salvation. It was that easy, wasn't it? Well, it's just as easy to receive healing as it is to receive salvation. Why? Because they're one and the same. All my growing up life before we were kicked out of the church, all salvation to me was I got heaven when I die. All salvation was, I'm saved from going to hell. And if you study it out, if you study it in the Hebrew, if you study it in the Greek, everywhere, it's everything you need. And just the word deliverance is everything you need. If you're sick, you won't be delivered from the sickness, right? It's everything you need. If you're in poverty, you won't be delivered from poverty, right? It's salvation. But the church, they had never preached it. Excuse me? Yeah. They'll get you saved every week. Okay? I need some stuff down here. Now they're there. My child. Let God do His deep work in you. What? Be sick as as a dog and, and die in poverty? That don't sound like my Jesus. You'll get your award, your, your rewards when you get to hell. I know I'm going to get them. But I'm also going to get what Jesus shed His blood for down here too. Yeah. Amen. Come on. That's why sometimes it's so hard to believe this. We've been religiously brainwashed. Amen. That's why you've got to keep hearing it and hearing it and hearing it. Faith comes by hearing. Hearing and hearing and hearing and decide I'm not going to take this mess no more. The doctor says, i got six months to live. Well, I'm only 50. God says in Genesis 6, 3, i got 120 years to live. I think i got 70 more left than just six months. Amen. I think I'll go with God. Amen. I'm not against doctors. I'm not against medicine. The only thing I'm against is you going there before you go to Jehovah Rapha first. That's the only thing I'm against. Yep. Go to the healer first. And he might tell you, you need to go see this doctor, you need to take this medicine. He's told that to me uh, before. I've been to doctors because he told me to do it. And don't don't get your faith all twisted up because you got to go. But don't go there first when you didn't even see Jehovah Rapha. See what he has to say, Amen. amen? Praise God. Call on the name of the Lord for everything you need and He will bring it to pass. Acts 2.21, you got His word on it. He said, it shall come to pass. You put your faith on that. I've received my healing already by faith and He said He will bring it to pass in the natural. Let Him do it, amen? Amen. Y'all get anything out of that tonight? Praise God.